there's so much titty in here that wasn't here a year ago. Like constraining. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hello, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit? Happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, Saturday is when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies in a Beat. The series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. So before we get started though, uh, we're gonna send you over to Adderall. Yeah, I did buy another Squishmallow. I've only bought one more. It's Penny the Pineapple. <laughs> I've only purchased this one because currently I'm on a different obsession right now. Probiotic sodas, and they are not sponsoring, but if you would like to, my email is always in the description. <laughs> this is Poppy. I really enjoy Poppy. This one's the raspberry rose. This is the strawberry lemon, the watermelon, the orange, all of them. All of the ones I've had, the root beer, the cola, Dr. Pop, they're all good. Olipop is also good. Um, I like most flavors. The only one I didn't like was the cherry vanilla and the cola one. But those have a f ton of fiber and I didn't know that. So I drank like six of them. You could see into my brain through my asshole. <laughs> anyway, uh, I say all that to say, I've been buying stuff. So I'm gonna need y'all to watch this ad. Okay, bye. <laughs> wow, my hair looks terrible. But you know what isn't terrible? Today's sponsor, HelloFresh. America's number one meal kit delivery service that allows you to have fresh, delicious, and healthy meals sent straight to the comfort of your own home. With quality ingredients measured and pre-portioned out for your convenience, you're able to get your meal on the table in about 30 minutes and oftentimes less. This last time they had something sent to me, it was a 10 minute meal for lunch. They getting speedy, all right? They know you have no time. HelloFresh allows you to experience new and delicious flavors, makes you a better cook overall, helps you try new things that get you out of recipe ruts, all of which I enjoy doing because I like food, all right? Because I keeps it very juicy and indeed eat that lunch to get that booty booty to get that brunch. I forget the words. While you're ordering, feel free to pick out some pre-cooked proteins to add on, maybe a dessert, maybe some garlic bread, all of which are delicious. If you'd like to check out HelloFresh, you can check it out at hellofresh.com and use my code Kenny16 to get 16 free meals plus three surprise gifts. Big thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery, baby. So last week we talked about uh, the 1999 LGBTQ classic, but I'm a cheerleader for a good movies and a glam. It was very cute, very funny. And I can see why a lot of people think of it as like a classic. But if you would like to check that out, that'll be linked up above. It'll also be in the good movies and a glam playlist as well as the bad movies and a beat playlist because I put everything there. <laughs> okay, and this week, all right, this week uh, was not, on the radar at first, it kind of swooped in the way a lot of movies from Tubi tend to. <laughs> I was planning on talking about the new, uh, new-ish, the newest, I guess, uh, Gabriel's Inferno movie. Uh, if you don't know about that, we have an ongoing series with that. They've done five movies now and I need to talk about the fifth one. I had my bullet points for it, my notes for it already done, I was ready. <laughs> but as fate would have it, uh, life had other plans and I ended up watching this gem and it, it, I just have to talk about it like right now. <laughs> Today we are returning to the world of Detroit hood nonsense. If you are familiar with my channel, then you are probably familiar with Tubi. It's a free streaming site where everything wonderful and everything terrible goes to die. It tends to house some really good movies, like classic movies on there and TV shows, early 2000s, late 90s movies. Um, 80s movies, and also like two seasons of the Steve Harvey show. Not the talk show where he's being like everyone's annoying black uncle, but the one where, he, the comedy show, he had a sitcom in the 90s, which is till this day, fucking hilarious. I think Showgirls is on there now. So like I said, quality things go there. But it also seems to be the hub of where like people put their independent uh, movies. <laughs> I guess uh, to be garnered that I am indeed a negress from Detroit. <laughs> it figured that I would enjoy hearing about some Detroit hood nonsense. And that is where it's correct. <laughs> we found ourselves in today's video because people were tagging me on Twitter because people discovered, again, the correlation between 
Tubi and Hood Nonsense and someone who was plugging some movie called the PPP Lone Gone or something like that. I tried to watch it. I was so bored and it was two hours and 13 minutes. Then plus ads, cause you watch ads because it's a free streaming site. But because I was already on Tubi, again, Tubi understands, I'm sure algorithmically that I am a Detroiter. So um, <laughs> it was like, you wanna see some shit from Detroit. What caught my eye was a new film, a film that came out this year, that was a much more reasonable and respectable hour and a half long called Detroit Dreams. A long and confusing story about a man who wants to make it in the music game. F me. I've said this before, I hate Detroit rap, it is the worst shit ever made. Not people that make rap music in Detroit. Detroit rap music. There is a difference. <laughs> Terrible. And I've always said that whenever Detroit is brought up in one of these movies. And you know how I know it's bad? It's not a singular person in my comments on Twitter. Not a single person was like, what you wallet? No one went to defend it. Ain't nobody's throwing themselves on the sword for Detroit rap. That shit is garbage. If I said that about shit from Atlanta, probably Chicago, New York, LA, somebody would be on my throat. Hey, nobody said shit. We say we like it <laughs> because it feels like we have to, but then when you around other Detroit don't nobody like that shit, except for the people that are making it. And I feel like they only making it because they think other like it. Well, I guess some artists may find it liberating in the sense that it doesn't hold you to the confines of being on beat. Being that this movie is on Tubi, it is of course free to watch. I will link it down below if you would like to partake yourself. But without further ado, this is Detroit Dreams 2022. Um, the first thing that let me know that I'm in for truly a viewing experience was that it, this movie is produced by <clears throat> Light Skin Films. Yes, this movie is being brought to you by Redbone Recordings. <laughs> if you look through the credits, it's the nickname of the executive producer. His name is Kevin Lightskin Kennard, but it's still f***ing stupid. <laughs> this is only one of the issues I have with the movie very, very early on. <laughs> because the second is uh, the title screen. <laughs> they misspelled Detroit. They spelled it Detriot, Detriot. And this is a typo that comes up several times. <laughs> Like as a bitch who is prone to typos, especially on Twitter, I know why mine look like that. Cause I just be tweeting shit and send it out to the ether. No regard, let it go into the wild and fly on its own. But this is a movie. <laughs> and it's also like a movie that's very much so like I'm putting on for my city. I'm doing shit for Detroit. This is what Detroit is. And you don't even spell it right. The movie starts off in the summer of 1996 in which we meet our main character, a man, a boy at this point named Bobby. This is a very long and annoying scene that doesn't really give you a whole lot of context for the rest of the movie. There's there's some stuff we kind of learn about his upbringing that doesn't really matter, but I'll let you know just because it's in there. <laughs> Bobby didn't like to get his shoes dirty as a child, which I thought would be like a euphemism or would come up later. It doesn't. Um, <laughs> his father was a club promoter and his mom yelled a lot. <laughs> Bobby's father dies of a gunshot wound after he got in an argument with a guy over a girl who he didn't know. Like they both were hitting on the same girl and for some reason he randomly Bobby's dad randomly brought out a gun and was like, I'll oh, shoot everybody up. And then the other dude shot him. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not saying that's what he get, but I'm saying like, it's a stupid ass reason to bring out a gun <laughs> and now you got shot. Now what? Now your baby mama boohooing, which side note, I didn't want to laugh. I did not want to laugh, okay? Cause this is obviously a very traumatic moment for our main character Bobby here. But like when the mom start crying, she does such a bad job of acting that it made me laugh. And I felt really bad about it the whole time, but luckily I was alone. <laughs> but yeah, I thought this would be a bit more of a catalyst to events that happen in the movie. It's not, but yeah, it's just the opening scene because it's the opening scene. <laughs> to continue on with this kind of issue with no one proofreading, we have a few black screens with like words to prepare you, like quotes, I guess, to prepare you for the viewing experience you're about to partake in. And it reads, 
Quote, this story is about the trail and error of countless artists searching for their dreams. The journey will forever be lived and forever be heard. Through the eyes of Detroit, it is time to be felt. Through the eyes of, well, at least they spelled Detroit right. Never mind, never mind. (laughs) The year is Detroit 2050. And we have Bobby kind of uh, monologuing, well, like a voiceover about what it's like to live in the city of Detroit. Again, as a Detroiter, I found it funny. (laughs) Like I found it weird, like it was odd. They say the only way to make it out of Detroit is with a big ass gun and a bigger bag of dope. Who is they? (laughs) <laughs> like, who are these people you're referring to? Especially because the n***a don't even do that. He ends up being a music manager. <laughs> he has artists signed to his uh, label, one of which is a drug dealer and rapper. His name is Flight, and he's gonna be like Bobby's main artist that really takes off. But uh, Flight is having a lot of legal troubles, especially because he keeps getting arrested in drug raids at like houses that he's been working at. And Which, as a side note, he just be hanging out with any crackheads. These n- like 60. The least you could do is like hang out with age appropriate crackheads. Like it's one thing to sell, but you like chilling with a bunch of 60 year old crackheads. Like what? (laughs) But he gets out on bail. He and Bobby go to talk to Bobby's lawyer who is kind of doing generally pro bono work because the lawyer was friends with uh, Bobby's father. He's like, I can't keep doing that. Y'all gonna need to get some money. Uh, He'll try to push back Flight's court date because his music is starting to pop off and he don't want to go to, you know, have to go to court in the midst of that, like he has a choice. But like I said, he's a music promoter. And apparently in the music managing world, the big place, especially in like hip hop, is to go to the titty bar. Go to a titty bar, get your stuff playing at the titty bar, you know your stuff is doing well. So he's hanging out, trying to befriend the DJs that play at titty bars, starts to kind of, you know, schmooze with other producer people that show up at titty bars. While he's there though, he ends up meeting a girl named Esther. She's a bottle girl at the strip club and he ends up like being, you know, drawn to her for some reason. I need to warn you, I'm gonna skip like 65% of the scenes of, of this movie. And let me tell you why. A lot of it is just like, timeline padding. Like if you cut out a big section of these nonsensical scenes, the movie would be like 12 minutes. <laughs> uh, it's just like a bunch of vague Detroitian, is that a word? <laughs> Detroit related references, uh, east side, west side stuff. If you're not from Detroit, you have no idea what I'm referring to in that regard. And just other Detroit esoterica that it's not really that important in the grand scheme of the story, to be quite frank with you. Also like terrible music, cause again, Oh, and like indistinct and indescript lines. Like the audio is so terrible. I don't have anything to say because I don't know what's happening. (laughs) Many of which the subtitles on Tubi don't even try to account for. It's actually hilarious. One of the scenes in which the audio is terrible is one that I think might be important. It's when uh, our boy Bobby goes to the barbershop and is introduced to this guy named Mont. Now Mont is bad news. He's kind of known for being a killer, but he has money, presumably from various drug ventures, and Bobby wants to go into business with him. (laughs) But he wants him to invest in his company. Uh, And he's like, hey, invest X amount of money. I'll give you 50% of the company and, you know, we can, we can get, Shit shaking. Mott says to him, you sure you want to get into business with it? Are you sure you want to do this? I killed But he's like, no, this is this is the choice I want to make. I don't know why your only choice was to go into business with a literal hitman, but okay, sure, whatever. But now Bobby has all this money. He's able to buy cars to make them look more legit when they go to the clubs to promote. You know, he's able to buy more, I guess, studio time for flight uh, and his terrible music that we have to listen to. But you know, Flight ends up getting a lot of play off of his terrible music. So who am I to judge? Uh, At least in this world, in this canon, this is a hit. Ooh, this is pretty. But he gets annoyed because Flight doesn't seem to really take the business side of music seriously. Like he'll be late for meetings because he's selling drugs (laughs) instead of like meeting executives and doing like the business part of things. One day while at one of the clubs or whatever, 
Bobby is speaking with another like manager friend of his and they want to collab their artist with Bobby's. Their artists are named Boys ENT or ENT Boys or something like that. Um, and he wants them to collaborate on like a remix. And Bobby's like, I don't really think their sounds would go together very well, but the other manager is pretty persistent, which I find kind of wild, like just saying, no, we won't take this work without bringing it to your artist. That's kind of shitty, but they end up doing it anyway. But Bobby is starting to feel a little strapped for cash because Mont has only delivered on half of the money that he promised he would give to invest to the company. So he ends up going to the barber shop that Mont hangs out at and he's talking to the barber who introduced him to Mont. And he's like, he needs to give me that money right now. Like he has 50% of my company. If he doesn't like do what he says he was going to do, we're gonna have to go to court. Hey, yo, this ain't, this ain't like a normal dude. He kill people for breakfast. He like eats n****s for lunch. Like that's his, he just like to kill n****s. <laughs> like, I don't think this is really what you wanna do. He's like, no, I will take him to court. And he was like, don't talk to him about court, especially not right now, because apparently somebody within his crew has already started ratting him out. And he was like, he's already real paranoid right now. Don't say no shit about no court. He called him up, Mott in the middle, in the middle of homicide. <laughs> he is in the midst of killing someone. And he's like, yo, I'm kind of busy right now. I got life shit going on. I don't have time to send you that right now and he was like oh well we're gonna have to dissolve the contract i'll take you to court if i have to and he was like court didn't they just say <laughs> just say he get mad he gets a wee bit upset one one would imagine i taste the rose now more that it's through a straw fascinating Meanwhile, Flight and the boy Z and T dudes are doing their collaboration. And this scene was actually legitimately hilarious because one of the dudes from the ENT boys is like listening while Flight is inside and he's like, yeah, this is incredible. And then when he turns to his friends, he's like, this doodle, -doo, this shit is garbage. This some doodle -doo ass, boo boo ass. Snapping on that bitch, I ain't gonna lie. Man, this that weak as fuck. And now we gotta do this because our record label was making us do this together, like what? But despite the reservations of both uh, Boise and T and Flight, the song ends up taking off again. But it ends up being somewhat of a catalyst because Flight decides to get, I don't even know who this dude is, just another lawyer, a friend of a friend, a family member, I don't know, to look over his contract with Bobby. Now, I'm very confused about the logistics of this contract. I don't know if Flight just wasn't actually signed Signed, like in paper to this record label or if he was signed and he's already on a very parasitic predatory contract I don't think they flushed out the logistics of that I don't think he signed to anything I don't think he signed with them even he just works with them because they're friends essentially but he's like I'm looking over this contract you brought me and this shit will be the death of you. You won't make enough money to buy a sandwich until you're 60, like that type of contract, like really bad. And <laughs> I know this shouldn't annoy me, but there's this line that the guy says that makes no fucking sense. It's a bunch of fake deepness. He says, there's a difference between a parasite and a protege. A parasite want everything you earn. A protege want what you learn. What? Who is he a protege to? Or is Bobby the protege? If I have to teach him how to do his job, then why are we here? What are you saying? Like, are you saying don't be a parasite after you just said that a contract was milking him for money? Did you just put some big words in here, baby? As a bitch that's been both applauded and criticized for using gratuitously large words, gr like gratuitous, <laughs> in both video and day-to-day -day speech, uh, but baby, know what the words mean. <laughs> like, so we all slip up. But again, this is a movie. Like, you gotta check that you know what the words mean. Especially when it's supposed to be this, like, old dude that's dropping some incredible profundity and knowledge on somebody. But again, the song takes off. Um, much like his first single, or the other single, I should say. I don't know if it's his first one. And he's doing radio interviews. The DJ radio interviewer person is like, tell us about your collaboration with uh, the, the other group. 
And he basically like, I don't particularly want to talk about them dudes. Those are my manager's people. Uh, we just did it because they said to do it. I don't know them. <laughs> wild. <laughs> Say, I am planning on making my own label. I'm not signed to anybody and I'm going to sign with somebody else or I'm going to make my own label type thing. I'm on my own shit and I want to promote my own song and I'm going to rap it at the Kodak Black uh, concert. Mind you, this is another thing I haven't brought up. They bring up Kodak Black a lot. Like there's a concert that everyone's trying to perform at for the Kodak Black concert. So much so that I started to ask myself, is Kodak Black from Detroit? No, he is from Florida. <laughs> so I don't know why he's, and he doesn't show up in the movie. So it's not like a, it's not like we needed Kodak Black in the movie. Maybe the producer's favorite or the writer's favorite rapper is Kodak Black. Oh, I don't know. Like, So obviously there ends up being a bit of beef because the dudes in the boys ENT end up on a different radio show and they like, how about your collaboration with Flight? We ain't here to talk about that bitch ass now. And they basically start saying how he don't want to show up to shows. He don't want to do his part in like promoting the collaboration. He's just over here promoting his own single and performing apparently at Kodak Black's concert. So obviously there's a lot of tension rolling around between Flight and Bobby because he's making Bobby look bad as his manager. And at a, like a get together or something, Bobby and Flight fight over his contract and he's basically like you were trying to squeeze me out of a lot of money just for what because we're friends like you weren't doing anything for me and now other people want to sign me so i'm gonna sign with one of them like what which is fair but is he wrong like no he ain't making no money from you and his song is like incredibly popular in detroit at this you know in this context now Remember I told you at the very beginning of this video, there was a girl named Esther that he was interested in. Apparently they're together, which is news to me, <laughs> but like it jumps straight into them being in like a very um, serious relationship. She's like, baby, I believe in you. She's like, forget about flight. I'm here for you. You know, I rap too. <laughs> you don't push her music out though. But yeah, they like together. I We have seen none of that happen. We have seen none of their relationship come to fruition. They're just, they met one time at a club and now they're like living together apparently. One day they are driving to Bobby's house and, or Bobby's parents' house, I think, or a family member, whatever. Um, and the barber from that barber shop that Mott hangs out at comes up to him and runs up on him. And basically he sticks him up inside the house, which is uh, very presumptuous that no one's in that house, especially if he's going to visit and it's daylight hours. And he's just like, I'm gonna kill you with the most witnesses. But he's like, I told you about talking to my, I told you about talking about, about no courts and now I gotta do this. Now I gotta shoot you because you was talking about blah, 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 blah. He's saved by Ebony. I sure name's not Ebony. Esther, <laughs> the girl, the, the, oh girl. And we never come back to this. Uh, he kind of says as like a throwaway line towards the end of the movie, I hit the body. We ain't see him do it. No one ever comes to ask about the dude who ran the barbershop. He just dead and gone and that's just it for the story, okay? And elsewhere, Flight is getting into some foolishness because he was hanging out with some people I don't know, like in an alley or something, just talking to women. There's a drive-by shooting, presumably meant for flight that ends up hitting a bystander, a woman who ends up dying because of it. I don't know entirely who was shooting at him. In, in theory, it could be a lot of people, any like drug connections, or it could be people that are in the boys ENT crew. This ends up being like a relatively big news story locally. And then, for some reason, Flight gets arrested for this. Uh, they think he had something to do with her getting murdered. Why? Like, it's like, it, they were in an alleyway. But again, a fuck ton of witnesses who would be like, no, he didn't shoot anybody. He was shot at by people in a car. Like it's like 12 people there, but they don't, I guess no one asked the other people who were there and they were like, fine, whatever, five for 15, manslaughter. So, okay. And he goes to jail for manslaughter. And I'm just like, huh, what? After the death of the barber, uh, and I guess the danger towards flight, Esther decides that she doesn't even want to stay in Detroit anymore. It's the city of killers and drug dealers. It is the city of the lawless Lord. I'm gonna go back to Milwaukee. Now, uh, Bobby 
decides to focus on his other artist. Uh, his name is Skype, who looks a lot like Flight, just with chubbier cheeks. You know, if Flight were a chipmunk. And things start to go well with Skype. Fast forward a year, Skype and his other artists are doing well. They're, you know, they're making moves. They're well known in the city. They all go to a Detroit Hip Hop Awards, which I searched after this because I ain't never heard of that shit. And apparently it's not real. <laughs> and while at this award, Bobby wins the Lifetime Achievement Award. And I'm like, the is like 28. <laughs> Which, uh, well, well, <laughs> because that in fairness is kind of darkly somewhat of an omen even. Maybe a little bit of a premonition type thing because uh, he gets shot. He gets shot at, the, <laughs> shot at um, the award show by one of uh, Mott's people. Again, none of y'all do crime in secret because this is the most populated ass place to be in the middle of a crowd and shoot somebody in the face. He also has very conspicuous locks, stands out. <laughs> but he's like, let me do the most crime in the most visible way possible. So Bobby did and uh, somebody calls up uh, Flight who's in jail for manslaughter. <laughs> oh my God, not nah, Bobby. But uh, the movie ends with a sort of somber sermon by a pastor at his funeral, Bobby's funeral. I guess there's many ways to read this sermon, but the way I was understanding it was like, you know, be the light of the world, very Christ-like, like Bobby did. And I'm like, when did Bobby do that? Like, we, like they kind of do this whole speech as if like Bobby was a civil rights leader. It's like that heavy. Young children will learn about them in his textbooks because he was a watershed a pioneer. So just <laughs> Motown. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you're gonna make someone larger than life, you might as well do it when he's dead. Um, what a cynical thing to say. Anyway, two years pass and Flight is on the brink of getting out of jail. The guard um, gives him some fan mail that he's been getting and gives him this like pep talk to create more music after he gets out of jail. There's this one line that made me laugh. Cause it almost felt like a, it felt very like stage play. Take these two years and think. Take these two years and think. But I'm like, dude, you gonna let him out? Like you just talk like what? He remembers who he is. He remembers his Detroit dream, why him and Bobby worked together and which was to make shit music. And he's like, yeah. In his head, he can hear people cheering flight, flight. Fly. And he starts to write down music, presumably for the first time in three years. Um, and that's the end of the movie. F me, they spell it wrong again. Terrible movie. Not as bad as some others though I've seen on TV. <laughs> Watch it if you want to. It's an hour and a half plus commercials. <laughs> it's a hood movie. I've seen much more entertaining hood movies. It wasn't as messy as I like a good hood movie to be, but it was fine. Again, as a connoisseur of trash, it's fine. I may have a higher tolerance than the average person, but it's okay. But anyway, if you like this video, feel free to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram, Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. If you have any bad movies that you'd like me to check out, feel free to put those down in the comment section and I will see you guys next time. Bye.